Right. Welcome back. Sorry about that abrupt stop. Uh, so we were saying that uh, the two cornerstones of God's covenant are his word and his nature. That is who he is, right? Now, let's look at a few verses to see how in the Old Testament, God's word and his nature were used synonymously, which means some places it's it, 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 both are together, used together, right? Uh, let's look at Psalms. 103 and verse 18. Sorry, Psalms 103. Yes, Psalms 103, verse 18. Yeah, Psalms 25 and verse 10. Right. So the uh, the NIV says, uh, uh, uses a very wonderful word. It says, all the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful. Right. All the ways of the Lord. That means however he works, whenever he works, are loving and faithful. Right. Let's read uh, Psalm 78 and verse 10. Psalm 78, verse 10. <clears throat> yeah. They do not keep God's covenant, but they refuse to walk in His law. Again, we are seeing here nature of God, the covenant of God, and the law both coming together. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 9. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 9. So here, Deuteronomy 7, 9, the covenant is used in equivalent to his loving kindness and his mercy, right? So God's covenant is a relationship of love, loyalty between God and his people, right? Are we his people? Yes, right? So he has this covenant of love and loyalty. Now, let's go into the nature of, of God's covenant with man. Now we wrote down or we have impressed in our hearts that God has established a covenant with us. We are in covenant with God. But what is the nature of that covenant? What does the covenant say? What does the covenant do? Right? First one, I think there are about four points here. God is the initiator and keeper of the covenant. Right? It's not like a rental agreement. Rental agreement, two parties are there, right? Uh, he says, hey, oh, you know what? You need to reduce the rent or reduce the deposit or, you know, give me the wall cupboards, give me the kitchen cabinets, then I can give you so much. There's this whole transaction happening. Now, in the biblical, in a godly covenant, God is the initiator, which means he started the covenant and he's the one who keeps the covenant. He's a keeper of the covenant, right? Genesis 15 verse 18. The Lord made a covenant with Abraham, right? Now, who did Abraham say, God, I love you so much. I honor you. I worship you. You're a wonderful God. Did, is there any account of that? No, right? And what, from what we know that Abraham was a Gentile, right? He was, a, he was like a sculptor or an idol maker, right? That's what, that's what his job was. But God chose Abraham. He pinpointed Abraham. He said, Abraham, you come here. Stand here. Now, you don't know much about me. But I'm going to tell you who I am. Right? I'm a God who makes covenants. And I'm a God who does the impossible. Now, I'm going to establish a covenant with you. This is what the covenant is. And he explained to him the entire covenant. So, who initiated that? God. Right? Now, God, in Genesis 15, 17, God appeared as a smoking furnace and a burning lamb that passed between the pieces, the two pieces of meat. They passed between that, right? 
So he is the one who establishes it. He is the one who keeps the covenant. How many of us have broken promises? We have, right? Even with God. Again, God is the one who's keeping the covenant, right? So he's not saying, no, I don't want, I don't want this person. No, right? He is still there. Genesis 6, 18 says, I will establish my covenant. It's not that God is saying, okay, I've, I've, I'm in covenant with you. And these are the things I'll do for you. But I will establish it. The word establish means to accomplish it, to confirm it, to make it um, uh, stand firm. Or the, uh, another in, good word is to say is to decree it. Right? I will make it stand firm. Whether ABC happens or no, the covenant will happen. The promises of the covenant will happen. Right? So I will establish the covenant. I will make it firm. I will uphold it. I will make it strong in such a way that nobody can break that covenant. The devil cannot come and say, you know what? You're, you know, you've done so much wrong, so many sins. So I think God has you know, changed the covenant with you. He's not even in covenant with you. Now, are there times we can believe it? Yes, no? Sometimes we say, oh man, yeah, I'm too far away. I can't. But here's the thing. God is the keeper of the covenant. All we need to do is go back to God and say, God, you know, I made a mistake. These are my mistakes. Forgive me. Right? And he is faithful and just to forgive us. Because of, he's the initiator and keeper of the covenant. So if you look at it, nothing should hinder us from going to the cross. Right? Nothing should stop us. Because we are not doing anything. All we are doing is asking forgiveness. That's all we have to do. And he will continue the covenant. Genesis 17.2 says, I will make my covenant between you and me. I will make it. Exodus 6.5 says, I have remembered my covenant. Now, this is Exodus 6, 5. In Exodus, it's wonderful. You know why? Because the people are coming out of Egypt. They're getting into the promised land. And it looks like things are going to go wrong. Right? But even before they're coming out of Egypt, even before they're coming into the promised land, right, God is telling Moses, listen, I made a covenant with Abraham. And that covenant I still remember. What is that covenant? I will make you a great nation. Right? So now you will walk out of Egypt. No enemy, no pharaoh, no devil can do anything. You all will walk out of Egypt. But you remember what we talked about? A covenant has three things. What are the three things? He wrote it down. Responsibility, promises and consequences. So what happened in Exodus? There was a covenant made with the people of Israel. God said, you will come out, you will go into the promised land. But they did not obey God. So what was there? Consequences. Is it part of the covenant? Yes. Is it part of the covenant? It is. Three things are part, right? What are, say that again. First one. Responsibility. Promises, consequences. Now, as the people were coming out of Egypt, they had certain responsibilities. What? Okay, when you come out, this is the way I'm going to lead you. You have no other God apart from me. Right? But two, what happened? They had promises. They came out of their tents. There was manna coming from heaven. There was a water that was following them everywhere. The Bible says their sandals didn't wear out. They walked out of Egypt. What a blessing that is. Imagine just walking out of Egypt for 400 years or they were in, in uh, captivity as slaves. Just walked out. So simple. It was a promise of God. But when they sinned against God, there were consequences. What does God say? Now you, this generation will not see. Over time, you know, sin, sin, 
they kept denying the promise or denying the covenant and finally god said this generation will not step into the promised land so they were going around mount seir in circles where is kena where is the promised land you go in circles right all they needed to do was just take one turn and go straight you will reach kena right 11 days 15 days by walk 11 days out by camel 40 years were there consequences yes but did god break the covenant what did god say he i will choose joshua joshua get ready you are going to take the people into the promised land because i still remember my covenant this is a perfect example right there is responsibilities when we when we obey him there are promises when we disobey him there are consequences and even now it applies the same thing when we are obeying god there are promises of god that will unfold in our life right but when we disobey him there are things that will happen we are opening the door to the enemy and the enemy can cause strife and difficulties in our life right so in leviticus 26:44 he says i will not break my covenant with them for i am the lord your god i will not break it it's it's established deuteronomy 4:13 so he declared to you his covenant and finally deuteronomy 4:31 he will not forsake you nor destroy you nor forget the covenant of your fathers which he swore to them so you see the word covenant happening so many times uh, from genesis right and it goes on all the way even through the old testament right all the way uh, even when they went into captivity uh, god is still keeping his command uh, covenant right when jeremiah daniel all these wonderful prophets came what did they talk about covenant hey you're in covenant with god but you're not behaving that way you're not walking that way right? so there's going to be consequences so when you look at the entire old testament we may look and say hey god what is this here too much of this no dad when you are only angry every time now it sounds like that because the people are doing all wrong no god has to keep his covenant if we disobey there are consequences now just like how we want the good things of god same way when we disobey there will be consequences right because it's part of the covenant so so we, what's important what we are establishing here is that god has established it and he will fulfill that covenant with us right? will it take time how will he do it how will he work through it will there be transitions yes but he will fulfill it right second one man enters into the, into god's covenant let's read deuteronomy if you look at the old testament even hosea hosea it's not here in this in the notes but in hosea chapter 6 it says come and let us return to the lord he has wounded us but he has also promised to heal us now what's happening in hosea is all of them have gone their own ways the israelites the jews everyone have gone their own ways following their own gods so god sends hosea as a prophet and he says hosea you go tell the people return to me and when they return to me i will accept them but the problem is they're not returning to me so that's why hosea comes and he says come let's return to the lord he has wounded us he has broken our spirit but he's ready to heal us right so man has a choice to enter in covenant with god 
the file is open right it is a choice for us to be partakers of that right so so if you look at it god offers his covenant and we make a choice by entering into that covenant right i have entered in and joined myself to the almighty god in an everlasting covenant with him now since i have made the choice to get into the covenant with god do i also have the choice to get out of the covenant with god do i have that choice yes right but the book is still open the agreement is still there right the agreement is still there anybody can come into the agreement it's left open but we have a choice to get into it or we have a choice to say no i don't want that right so man is the one who needs to get into the covenant with god right now for example we may have been somebody may have been a unbeliever right and so they suddenly you know they accept the lord jesus what's happened now he's come in covenant with god right because he's made the choice now he may not even have understood right so for example even me when i became a believer i didn't say oh man now i'm in covenant with god all the blessings of god are going to flow on me i had no idea what is covenant right but if you look back you know all of us if we look back when we became believers we didn't know anything about covenant but god was faithful to keep the promises of the covenant okay son daughter you don't know what a covenant is over time you will learn until then here take these blessings take these things that i'm giving you right i'm going to give you life protection providence healing deliverance everything is going to be yours because you are in covenant right uh, i'm reminded of this a uh, book that i read long back uh you know, he's a he's a wonderful writer I forget his name uh yeah so uh, he was a reporter also he was a brilliant man this happened in the early 1950s uh and what is name sorry i mean okay i forget the name sorry i will probably get it later but he was a brilliant man right he was an atheist right so he was sent to india to a, a few villages to do a survey about india and to do a write up so he wanted to write about india about the culture of india and all that so he came to india and uh, when he was in india he went into one of some of these villages and he began to see the culture began to see the people and he didn't believe in god right he was not a like a believer or atheist so one day uh, you know in villages women go out into the rivers or the lakes and they have a bath open during those days there was no covering nothing so this woman uh, he realized that hey women go to the you know the river or the stream to have bath so he went and as he went there he saw far away a very beautiful woman and she was having a bath right and his mind started saying go to her go and see right so as he was swimming towards her in his heart he kept saying i don't want to go and i don't want to see this but his mind kept saying go you can see right and so as they as he as she, he kept swimming there he reached there and when he looked at her he said he saw the most ugliest person ever a woman whose face was all peeling off her she was leprous her fingers were all you know bent over and her body was all in scars and pusses all over her body she had leprosy and this man thought to himself what a horrible dirty looking woman but at that moment he thought to himself who's more dirty that woman or my heart and it dawned upon him that he was more evil than this woman who looked so ugly then started his journey about knowing the lord jesus right and he came to the lord at a very old age somewhere uh, in his early 60s right malcolm magridge yes 
जी अगर नहीं आई कैन मगर इच्छा ब्रिलियंट रिपोर्टर ब्रिलियंट राइटर बट यू सी हाउ गॉड कीप्स द कवनेंट ओपन डजेंट मैटर हाउ फार वी आर डजेंट मैटर व्हाट वी हैव डन ही कीप्स द फाइल ओपन फॉर अस राइट thirdly there are blessings and there are curses right now every time in the old testament the word curse is it's <coughs> it's not referring to okay uh, you know god just pouring out curses upon people and, and we know that in the new testament when we open doors to the enemy they are allowing the enemy to work in our lives so exodus 19:5 anyone can read that Thank you, Vimal. So, <clears throat> so we see here in both the verses the pronouncement of blessings and the pronouncement of curses, right? So he's telling the Israelites, "You keep my commandments, and you see how I'm going to bless you, right? You bind those commandments on your chest, like a like a person, like a person in the army. They bind that, you know, that shield on their chest. You bind it there, write it on your doorpost." write it on your house frames right just keep the word always with you but you see what will happen when you do that i will open up the heavens i will pour out my blessings upon you you and your children will see the blessings of the lord now violating god's covenant now in the notes it's in inverted commas right it says breaks the covenant and the blessings are forfeited the word breaks here refers to me right it's not like god is saying okay i'm breaking it no me getting out of the promises of god or the covenant of god right i'm saying i don't want this and when i do that i'm bringing myself into god's judgment right we have a choice of putting ourselves back into the covenant you know have you heard of people where they have accepted the lord they've lived a good life right and after that suddenly they deny the lord jesus right what happened they are putting themselves out of covenant with god but the book is still open right there are some of them who we know of where they give their life to christ they reject god after that but after some time they come back and god accepts them back right and that is uh, that's how we can step into Covenant Lev- Leviticus twenty six and verse twenty five says, "And I will bring a sword against you, that will execute the vengeance of the covenant. When you are gathered together within your cities, I will send pestilences among you, and you shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy." So as the Lord is saying, if you get out of the covenant, no more I'm going to protect you. But even now, when you look at now. still god is so gracious right why is it that you know many of them who are unbelievers they are still blessed they are still protected everything is going on fine in their lives why is that that is because of god's mercy and grace nothing else nothing else right you cannot say because i i went to the gym and strong i worked hard all my life right that's why my business is doing well they may be believers and unbelievers whatever it is it is the grace of god the mercy of god in our lives right 
Fourthly, God does not permit dual commitments. What is the meaning of dual? Two. I can't have two commitments. I can't be sitting on the fence and saying, okay, Monday to Friday, I'll be in this covenant. Saturday and Sunday, I'll be in this covenant. Now, that was what was happening in Israel. They were all sitting on the fence. For example, the feasts and the tabernacles came. Sabbath day came. Okay, God's covenant. And they go back on the fence. Do whatever they feel like. Right? And then another time comes, oh, still everything is fine. Okay, let me jump into another bad covenant that is into the devil's hands. Do whatever I feel like. Oh, the another you know feast is coming okay let me stand on the fence once the feast comes i'll jump back into this that's not what god wants there's no dual commitments god is loyal and faithful and he calls us to be in that covenant to be loyal and faithful right he calls us for that now i can say i'm in covenant but not behave like i'm in a covenant you understand what i'm saying and I can say, hey, I'm in covenant with God. It's good. It's powerful to say it. But I should also behave like I'm in covenant with God. Right? When the devil comes and says, you know what, this is what you are. You know, I'm not going to let you do this or do that. Or oh, I'm going to bring these troubles on you. You can say, hey, God, devil, I'm in, commitment. I'm in covenant with God. Right? I have a covenant with God. Devil will say, okay, good. But I don't see it in your life. You know it in your head, but it's not there in your spirit well, the devil knows no he knows if we are walking in covenant or not and he he knows how to get a person how not to get a person right so if god is faithful to his covenant he expects you and me to be faithful to his covenant right god's covenant is of absolute love and so he expects us to love with all our heart soul mind and strength right? with everything with our inmost being that's where the psalmist says, no? from my innermost being, I will love the Lord. Right? So, if, if God has put this covenant on us of love, grace, mercy, we must also love the Lord with all that we have. All that we have. Right? Sometimes, <clears throat> it's very easy to sing songs about it. Yeah? Very easy to sing songs about God's love. It's nice. What about the other way? What about saying, God, I love you? That also we can sing. But that can be just mere lip service. But God knows. Are we truly singing it out of our heart? Is it an outflow of our heart? Are we loyal? Are we faithful to the covenant that God is giving us? Right? Failure to obey the blood covenant, there are consequences to those uh, failures, right? Let's look at five important covenants. Okay, everyone with me, right? So what are the four, I think there's four points, yes. What are the four points? God is the initiator of the covenant. Yes. Yes. Amazing, right? So these four things, very important. The nature of his covenant. Exodus 34, 14. I thought, let's read that. For you shall worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is also a jealous God. Right? So if I have anything else that is taking priority in my life than God, then God is saying, hey, I'm a jealous God. You've got to give me the first priority right even if it's family even if it's you know business or your work or uh, you know the things of this world that we see god is saying hey i'm a jealous god give me the priority first i will give you everything else right so will we keep our covenant will we keep our covenant from our side do we endeavor to do that yes yes or no what happened? Is it too difficult? It's not difficult. 
Not at all difficult. Don't be are you are you all scared? <laughs> no, right? It's a it's a joy to be in that covenant, right? The the book is open. But only thing is don't go away from that covenant, right? And the best part is we can continue to grow and grow. We talked about it in intimacy, right? It's like rivers of living water. It's not going to stop. It's just going to keep flowing. And we can keep drinking, drinking, and drinking. <clears throat> That's the amazing part of our covenant. Okay, let's look at five important covenants. First one is a covenant with Noah, right? Okay, the covenant with Noah. Let's read Genesis chapter 6 and verse 18. Yeah, right. So we all know the story of Noah, right? God is ready to destroy the whole earth. And he says to Noah, okay, you build an ark, you, your children, your, off, your offspring, children, children, you know, all of you all get into the ark. And this is what he says, I will establish my covenant with you and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wives, and your son's wives with you. Genesis 9, 8 through 17. Let's read that. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me read 12, 13, and 14. Uh, just, no, let me read that uh, so that the online audience also gets it ready. Uh, verse 12, and God said, this is a sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in the cloud and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Right? Verse 14. And it shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. The waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. Verse 16. The rainbow shall be in the cloud and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant God made and every living creature of all the flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh of the earth. You know, it, it's so powerful, you know, when you read this. It's, it's like God saying, so many times, God, why are you repeating this so many times? You already said no once. I will establish my covenant with you. There will be a rainbow. How many times? Why do you want to keep saying it? Because God is a God who remembers his covenant and he stands on this covenant. He keeps telling his people, see here, he keeps telling Noah, I will set my rainbow on the cloud. When you see the rainbow, or when I see the, God is saying, when I see the rainbow, I will remember the covenant I made with you. Right? Will God forget the covenant? No, but he made a sign. And he said, once, you, once that rainbow comes, I will remember the covenant I made with you. But he says that again, I will set a rainbow over the cloud. And, and the rainbow shall be seen on the cloud. The rainbow shall be, verse 60, the rainbow shall be in the cloud. And I will remember my everlasting covenant. And this is the sign of the covenant that I will be established. So many times. Sign, I will remember, covenant, covenant, covenant. Right? It just goes on. The Noah, the covenant of Noah. Right? And every time we look at a rainbow, what is the first thing that comes to our mind? Covenant. Where else do we see a rainbow in the Bible? Go on. Anybody online? Where else do we see a covenant in the Bible? Rainbow. Sorry. Where else do we see a rainbow? So we see it in, Gen in Genesis with Noah. Anywhere else? Okay. So in the book of Revelation, if we go to the end, right? It says... He's seated on his throne. There are 24 elders, 12 this way, 12 this way. And there is a rainbow over. Rainbow is a sign of mercy. 
and grace. And that's what God had on Noah, a covenant of mercy. Right? Why did God choose Noah and protect him and his family? Because of God's mercy. Right? So, the second covenant, I, I'm sure we all know this, the covenant with Abraham. Uh, and let's read, okay, that's a big passage, but let's not read the whole thing. Genesis 7, 17, 1 to 14. So we all know the covenant, no? So the covenant was basically, Abraham, I will give you a son, I'll give you a child, and you will be a father to many nations. And uh, uh, when he is eight days old among you, he shall be circumcised. And these are certain rules that you have. You have to do all of this. But I am a God who will keep my covenant. So he's, you know, talking to Abraham again. Look at this third one. The covenant with Moses and Israel. Let's read these two verses. Exodus 34, verse 27 and 28. So we know the story of Moses as well, right? Moses goes up to the mountain and he's there with God and God gives him these 10 commandments. And he says, this is a covenant that I'm keeping with you. Moses, you know, you kept saying you know, the, in the burning bush also, you said, I don't want to go, right? You said you send somebody else. You know, now I've, I made a covenant. I said, I'm going to bring the people out of Egypt. I brought them out. Now here's a set of 10 commandments, new covenants that I'm giving you. As you go into the promised land, remember these commandments. Ten powerful commandments. Right? And Deuteronomy 4.13 says, So he declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, the ten commandments, and he wrote them down in two tablets of stone. Now, the ten commandments are there, and then in the New Testament we have plenty of commandments again. But, is it that the Ten Commandments don't apply now? What do you say? Do they apply now? Yes. Right? So Jesus said, you know, the, the entire commandments is all rolled up into one thing. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor. Right? So if you do those things, you'll be obeying all the Ten Commandments. Right? So, we see here, first one was a covenant with Noah. The sign was rainbow. Mercy. Two was the Abrahamic covenant, the powerful covenant. Right? God is saying, Abraham, I have chosen you and I will make you a, a great nation. Third one was covenant with Moses and Israel. He says to Israel, Israel, you are like a sheep that's going astray every time, doing everything wrong. Even though you saw the miracles, you know, sometimes to picture it is very difficult, no? God parted the seas into two. Manna is falling from heaven, water is falling, following them. There's a pillar of fire uh, in the night. And now this, these people are saying, let's make a calf and uh, worship this idol as God. How can it be? Yeah? How can it be? Sometimes we think of it. No? How can it be? These guys have seen. I mean, if I have seen God parting the seas into two, that will be there for the rest of my life. Yes or no? If, if we see those wonderful miracles, I would say, oh man, no, no, no. God is able to do impossible things. But what happened? Moses has gone up, they have made one golden statue and they're worshipping it. Like, what happened? They're breaking the covenant. You know, it's wonderful when you read that later portion. Moses, it's really funny when you read it. Moses takes those two tablets, breaks the idol, takes that, smashes the pieces of the idol mixes it in water and makes them drink it. Drink it. Right? Now, why? Because Moses knew how powerful the covenant was that God made. These people took it lightly. Oh, now I'm out of Egypt. No. no you go. Don't worry. We don't need God. We can do whatever we want. Right? So, but God is reminding us that he has given us these commandments. The covenant of David, the fourth covenant, uh, let's read Second Chronicles 13 and verse 5. 
Somebody else can take Second Chronicles 21 and verse 7. Second Chronicles 21, 7. Yes, I am read, sir. Yeah. The, yet the Lord would not destroy the house of David because of the covenant he made with David. Right? So he's here it's so powerful. He's saying, you know, David, I made a covenant with him. I sent Samuel and, you know, I, I, I made a promise. I made a covenant that this guy is going to become the king of Israel. And if you look at, you know, you know the verse there says, uh, sons, uh, the house of David, referring to Israel, right? So even Israel, I will keep my covenant because of the promise that I have made, right? Um, Psalms 89, verse 3 and 4. Let's read that. Psalms 89, first. Sorry, who is that? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Who, yeah, the verse is, Aaron, the verse is Psalms 89, 3 and 4. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Psalms 89, 3 and 4. Yes, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. So Psalms 89 talks, now God is saying to uh, David, he's saying, I have made a covenant with my son, David, and out of David shall come a greater king, and that king will be, will, you will, your seed, I will establish it forever and build up your throne to all generations. Talking about who? who about Jesus. And his seed also I will make to endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven. So if you look at Jesus' genealogy, we know that he came from the root of Jesse, right? From, from David's, he was a, a descendant of David. Verse 37, 89 verse 37 says, I will, It shall be established forever like the moon, even like the faithful witnesses in the Sky. Let's read Isaiah 11 and 10. Yeah. So we see here that many, many verses, many, many verses we see that it goes on Jeremiah, Isaiah. Uh, 11 10 Isaiah 55 3 incline your ear and come to me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you the sure mercies of David Jeremiah 33 and 21 then my covenant may also be broken with David my servant so that he shall not have a reign a son to reign on his throne and with the Levites the priests my ministers so basically it's talking about Jesus becoming the seed of David, going on to become the real, the true king of Israel. Now, what, the last covenant, the fifth one, the new covenant, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 through 16. Let's quickly read that.
Okay, thank you so much. Now, all these four covenants were covenants written on paper or tablets, whatever. These are written covenants. But the new covenant that you and I are in is a covenant written in our hearts. Right? It says that it's a covenant where we become new creations. Second Corinthians 5.17 says, if anyone is in Christ, He's a new creation. So these four covenants, the Abrahamic, the Davidic covenant, the Noah covenant, and the, what's the fourth one? Sorry? Mosaic covenant. Yes, sorry. Mosaic covenant. All these four covenants have certain blessings, certain promises. But if you look at the fifth covenant, which is the new covenant, it's no more writing on paper. Right, but it's now it's it's a it's writing in our hearts, an eternal covenant, right? A covenant that's greater than all four of the covenants. And here's what God is saying: as believers, you and I can are part of all those four covenants, right? And also the new covenant, which is far greater than the old covenant. So what is what is interesting, what is the most wonderful thing is that, you know, the old covenant, they enjoyed certain blessings, right? Remember what Jesus said? The prophets of the old were waiting to see what you people see. They're waiting to hear what you people are hearing. Right? Talking, referring to himself. They talked about the Messiah, but here you people are seeing the Messiah. Right? So in the new covenant, you and I, we have all those blessings of the four covenants. Then we have the new covenant where God himself resides in us through the Holy Spirit. What an amazing covenant, right? No more is, are those four. No, it's not like I'm saying, okay, God is somewhere else. Lord, are you there? Are you helping me? Should I keep going to my covenant? No. It's a covenant written in our hearts. And it's established forever. Amen? Amen. So let's close in prayer. Um, and next week we'll continue from God's covenant names. Right? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for what we have learned today. We thank you that you are a God who establishes covenants. And you are the keeper of the covenant, Lord. And you have called each one of us to be partakers, to be co-heirs with you. In this covenant, Lord. And I pray, God, that each one of us will continue to pursue more of you, to grow in intimacy with you, Lord. We thank you uh, for what we are learning, oh God. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will continue to teach us and empower us, Lord, uh, to walk as your children, part of this covenant, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you are not a God who, uh, you know, who breaks his covenant, but you are faithful to your promises, faithful to your covenant. We pray, God, that you will enable and empower us to be faithful uh, also to this covenant, Lord. We thank you for this time of learning. I pray, God, that you will be with each one of us uh, throughout this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone who has joined online. Have a great week ahead. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Good message. Thank you. God bless.